Hey guys, uh, Woodruff here. So let's go through some practice questions over acid base. So um, more than most topics, I commonly get asked like, okay, well, what kind of questions are we going to be asked about acid base or how in depth do I need to know? So hopefully these questions will start to answer that for you. Um, I've broken down and I kind of have a, um, like a different type of question that we could ask you on the exam, um, but also just the different ways to approach it. A lot of times you don't know what you need to know or how in depth to go until you start really looking at these practice questions, but hopefully it might also cover some content or some confusion that you have around acid-base disorders as well. So let's get started. So the first type of question we could ask you is just a simple knowledge question. It's pretty much just asking what acid-base imbalance is this? Um, and so in order to figure this out, um, really all you have to know to solve this problem is just know how to uh, how to interpret an ABG. Now, for a lot of people, that's a lot. I know that it's hard, it's tricky. I have other videos on here if you want more help with that. I'm not gonna go in depth of how to interpret. I'm gonna just kind of show you real quick how I would solve this problem. So let's say I do you know how to um, break down an acid base imbalance or how to interpret it. So um, we're looking here first at the pH. So the pH is high and I use the Rome method. You can use whatever method works best for you. That's just how my brain works. So I have a pH that's high. Um, so with a high pH, I already know that I'm dealing with a state of alkalosis or um, you know, um, there's too much base going on here. So I can already cross out A and B because I am a state of alkalosis, not acidosis. Um, and then I need to see if uh, my CO2 or my HCO3 is going in the same direction or the opposite direction. And from the looks of it, it looks like my pH is going in the same direction as my HCO3, which means I have a metabolic problem. So already just by having that information, I can tell you the answer has to be D because it's the only one that's metabolic and alkalosis. Um, so it has to be the right answer. But let's say that I just wanted to be super sure. I also know that it's uncompensated because I can look here at my CO2 and my CO2 is within the normal range. Now it's on the high end of normal, but it's still normal 35 to 45. Um, and so because of that, I am not starting to compensate yet. I am not getting like, in order for this to be partially compensated, this would have to be um, abnormal. Like it would have to be above 45. Um, and to be fully compensated, my pH would have to be back to normal, but that's a different question for a different video. But effectively, this question is really just asking you, what is this ABG telling you? Um, so that's one type of question we could ask you. Um, here's another one. A nurse is caring for a client who is experiencing nausea and vomiting. Which acid base imbalance is this client most at risk for? So this kind of question is trying to figure out if you re recognize like who's going to be at risk for different acid base balance imbalances. Um, and so with this one, a patient's having nausea, vomiting. So then I have to sit there and be like, okay, what are they losing or what are they holding on to? And with nausea, vomiting, they are losing acid. So I'm going to look for something that's going to be an alkalosis. If I'm losing acid, I'm going to have more alkaline or alkalosis. So I can um, narrow it down to B or D. Um, so, and then I have to think about, okay, is this a, you know, I usually think of metabolic problems as like fluid loss problems or fluid gain problems. Whereas respiratory is usually a respiratory disorder, like most respiratory issues. Well, re respiratory alkalosis is more that patient who's like anxiety prone and um, breathing super fast and breathing off all their acid. Whereas um, metabolic is where they're losing acid, you know, through usually their GI tract, et cetera. Um, <sighs> Uh, losing or holding on to, et cetera. But so effectively when I'm narrowing this down, if I narrow it down to B or D, the best answer there's probably going to be B, even if I wasn't sure, um, just because this is like a fluid issue versus a respiratory issue. Um, so, and B is the correct answer. Uh, but yeah, so kind of think for this um, metabolic issues, like for metabolic alkalosis, um, I always think of like an alcoholic who is vomiting. Um, they're losing, um, they're, they're losing their acid through their vomit, whereas metabolic acidosis that's when you're losing base um, out of your ass. And that's, I know, I'm sorry, this is hopefully this won't get, um, you know, like I won't get in trouble for saying that on a YouTube channel, but um, I'm saying it for only medical purposes so that for your learning abilities. So if it helps you to remember it, I hope it does. So, um, but yeah, so I think metabolic issues are like fluid losses, um, like, cause you know, the other things like metabolic acidosis could also be DKA where you have all those fluid losses um, because the fluid shifts cause the sugar um, leaches all the fluid from the cells and then you pee it out. Um, and so, yeah, so pretty much metabolic alkalosis is all the acid loss, usually through nausea, vomiting, et cetera. 
um, what do you call it, or antacids, et cetera, um, where you're like, you're decreasing the amount of acid that you have. Um, whereas metabolic acidosis is like losing stuff through your stool or um, DKA, et cetera. So all the respiratory ones are gonna be more related to actual respiratory diseases. So that's how I remember it. I don't know if that helps you, um, but anyway, that's the, also the strategy for this is I just have to look at what the problem is. Are they losing acid or are they losing base? Are they gaining acid or are they gaining base? Like what's going on? And then I start to break it down. And at least with ones like these, you can start to kind of narrow it down and start to like at least knock out ones that you know it cannot be. Um, so something like this, I could already go ahead and probably knock out the respiratories and say, hey, this is something metabolic probably. Okay, are they losing acid or are they gaining acid? All right. So nurses caring for a client with COPD who is in respiratory acidosis. So this is a problem where they tell me what the problem is and um, what the acid base imbalance is. Well, what are they gonna ask me to tell them? Looks like they're gonna say what intervention is most appropriate for this client. So it's important to note in a question like this, like the last two questions have been more knowledge questions, um, whereas um, this one is gonna be more of an application, like what's gonna be most appropriate. So it's not saying that um, there's only one right answer here. It's saying that what's gonna be the most helpful or what's gonna be most directly useful for this patient. Um, um, so my first choice is to have the client breathe into a paper bag. Uh, so I need to go back and look at the question now and say like, okay, COPD, um, you know, they might be breathing a little bit faster, um, but I know that they're holding on to CO2. That's why they're in a state of respiratory acidosis. So I have to think about, you know, if they're holding on to CO2, would it help them to breathe into a paper bag? I don't really think that's going to be helpful, but I'll keep it in the, my back pocket just in case. Um, tell the client to take slow, deep breaths. Well, a patient that's holding on to acid, um, they actually need to exhale more to get that acid off. So I don't think taking slow, deep breaths is necessarily helpful. I like the deep part, um, but I don't necessarily like the slow part. Um, apply oxygen at two liters nasal cannula. Well, you know, a patient with COPD might need two liters nasal cannula, you know, just based on their condition, but it's not necessarily going to help them. So you always have to look at this. A lot of times students might look at this question and just see, see the COPD part and be like, oh, okay, what's gonna be most helpful for them? But this is asking for a patient with COPD with respiratory acidosis, what's going to be most helpful. So you always have to look at the questions because sometimes you may, there may be an answer in the, um, in the choices that's, um, going to be helpful in general, um, but it's not necessarily good. And I have, I have one on my respiratory practice that it will make more sense when I discuss that one. Um, so I have, um, you know, um, I, a lot of times we choose answer choices that are helpful in general for this patient. We have to think about what's going to be most helpful for this particular patient in this particular situation and what's going to be most direct. Um, encourage pursed lipped breathing. Um, and so pursed lip breathing is that where it helps to prolong their exhale, which allows them to get more CO2 out. So to me, that is the most direct thing that's going to help them to exhale to get out that CO2. Because really this is saying like what intervention is going to best help to get CO2 out. So slow, deep breaths is not going to help as much as that pursed lip breathing. And I know that some of y'all are probably saying, oh, you know, <laughs> you know, because the depth of the breath is important, but, um, and we're not going to tell them, hey, breathe super fast. Um, but doing that pursed lip breathing is going to be most directly helpful, especially for a patient with COPD who is holding on to too much CO2. So D is the correct answer. All right, here's another type of question. A nurse is reviewing ABG results for a client. What other assessment findings are consistent with these findings? So in other words, they're trying to say, what is this patient gonna look like? So with this one, what you need to do is you need to figure out what is the acid base imbalance. And then based on that, um, what are they gonna look like? And a good way to break this down is if it's a respiratory problem, you should be thinking about, okay, are they breathing slow or are they breathing fast? Cause that's usually the issue. It's all about that CO2, how fast or slow they're breathing. Um, you it, like, cause really this is asking you what are risk factors for different acid base imbalances. Um, and then if it's a metabolic problem, I talked about it being a fluid issue that either are losing fluid, holding on to something, usually they're losing it. Um, uh, but yeah, so I can look at it that way. So let's kind of go through this. Um, so first I have to be able like, this is kind of a two part question. You first have to figure out what is this acid base imbalance? So I've got a pH, um, that is a little high. Um, I've got a CO2 that is a little low. Um, so that is, um, that is uh, this is obviously a state of alkalosis. 
Um, and then if their respite, if their um, CO2 is low, that means they're breathing faster. And this is a respiratory problem because my pH is going up and my CO2 is going down. So that's respiratory opposite. Um, so I have a right now, if just to kind of, um, I'm sorry if I'm not being very clear, this is a state of respiratory alkalosis. Um, this patient is probably going to be breathing pretty fast, so I would guess. So now that I know it's respiratory alkalosis, I have a respiratory problem. I can cross out any of the choices in here that have to do with maybe vomit nausea, diarrhea, something to do with DKA, that kind of stuff. So I can cross out D. So now I'm down to A, B, and C. So then I need to see which of these is most consistent if I have a patient who is um, in a state of respiratory alkalosis. Well, I just said that if their CO2 is low, they must be breathing fast. So having a respiratory rate of 10 does not seem very likely. So now I'm down to B and C. And this is um, also a test-taking strategy. These are two things that are opposite. One says that they're restless and anxious, and the other one says they're lethargic and hard to arouse. So these are two polar opposites. And a lot of time when there are two polar opposites, not always, but when there's two polar opposites in a question, a lot of times one of them is right. So I have to think about this. If I had a patient who was breathing super fast, um, would they be more restless and anxious or are they more likely to be lethargic and hard to arouse? So that, th um, you know, the assessment finding that's actually going to be most consistent with these findings is going to be restless and anxious. So the respiratory alkalosis, I always think of that patient that's like nursing students during exams, you know, breathing really fast, freaking out. And so restless and anxious is much more common or consistent with respiratory alkalosis. Whereas if lethargic and hard to arouse would be much more, and, and A, the respiratory rate of 10 would be much more common in respiratory acidosis. So that's something else you can look at. Having a respiratory rate of 10, lethargic, hard to arouse, these are all respiratory acidosis. And a lot of times your distractors in your um, test are going to be um, answer choices that are similar to um, or similar or opposite to the answer that we're looking for. So in other words, we're trying to see one, if you know what acid base imbalance this is, and then two, then differentiating those subtle differences between the two where um, not always, but a lot of patients with respiratory acidosis are going to um, like a lot one of the um, causes that can happen or one of the reasons that you can have respiratory acidosis is you could have had like an opioid overdose. Um, you could just be coming out of surgery or um, have had a head injury, stuff like that. Um, but it's all, um, remember I said, um, respiratory imbalances are really commonly related to your respiratory rate. So in other words, when I think respiratory alkalosis, I should think tachypnea, the patient's breathing fast, or respiratory acidosis, not always, but usually the patient's breathing slower. Um, and because again, like you think about COPD, they're either breathing slower or they're holding on to CO2, one of the two. Um, so definitely some things to consider, but hopefully that makes sense. So the correct answer here is be restless and anxious. All right, last but not least, um, this is saying, um, asking me to identify, this is back to a knowledge question, saying they're caring for, I'm caring for a client with pneumonia, which ABG is most consistent with this diagnosis? So there's two ways to go about this. First, you can identify if you know what kind of acid base imbalance that a patient with pneumonia would have, you can definitely sit there and be like, oh, okay, well, I know it's this acid base imbalance. Let me find the ABG, but let's say that you don't know. So then I always say, go back and start thinking about it. Okay, a patient with pneumonia, this is a respiratory problem. So there's going to be something going on with their respiratory system. So you can go about this again, like there's, you can work smarter, you can work hard, <laughs> you know, it depends on how you like it. You could analyze all of these ABGs and write out what each one is that might take you too much time. You don't have that much time on the exam. So I think it's more helpful to approach it by figuring out which acid base imbalance I'm looking for first, um, and then going from there. So if I have a patient with pneumonia, um, they could be breathing a little faster because of their pneumonia, but more than likely what I'm thinking is, is that because of all that junk that's hanging out in their alveoli, that infection, um, that they're gonna have troubles with gas exchange. And if you're having troubles with gas exchange, you should think about respiratory acidosis. So right now, then what I need to do is figure out which of these is respiratory acidosis. So I can already cross out A and C because both of them, um, A has a normal pH um, and C is, uh, um, uh, alkalosis. Um, so it, it's, and um, at that, it's a metabolic alkalosis. So if you weren't sure if you were like, well, what if it is, you know, a, um, a respiratory alkalosis? Well, there's not even an option for that. So I'm already have to kind of, you know, in my brain say, okay, this has to be respiratory acidosis. But anyway, so now I'm down to B and D. So I have two, they both have a low pH. So I'm going to start there. So um, they both have a low pH, um, but I need to find the one that is respiratory because one of these is metabolic and one is respiratory um, acidosis. So I see a low pH and now I need to see if my CO2 is going 
opposite. So which one is um, the pH low, but my CO2 high? And the only one that my pH is low, my CO2 is high is going to be B. Um, and that is consistent with a um, acid base imbalance of respiratory acidosis. So B is the correct answer here. Um, it cannot be A because that is a, um, that would be, let's see if I can figure this out really quick. That's elevated and that's a little low. So this would be like a fully compensated respiratory um, alkalosis. And um, that's not very consistent with pneumonia. Um, we talked about C being a metabolic alkalosis. Um, so we definitely, um, it's not, not a metabolic issue here with pneumonia. Um, then with D, we talked about it being a, um, metabolic acidosis. And we said this was not a metabolic problem. So that just leaves me with B as my correct answer. So that's another way to go around and do it if you wanted to do it that way. But like I said, it might take you more time. But anyway, well, I hope this helped. I know these um, ABG stuff, they're no joke, but um, hopefully it got you a little closer to understanding this stuff. I'll see you next time.